Good morning, everyone. On today's show, we'll discuss EVO, which just ended, and its implications not only in the fighting game community, but on my streams as well. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we got to figure out what's the next big thing that I'm doing. Now that I finished both the Elden Ring DLC and Riven Remake, we're going to have some openings in the schedule. And, uh, you know, we got to think about what's going to be balanced well with that schedule. Um, in addition to my upcoming Digital Summer Party this coming Saturday. So, we got some planning to do, some things to discuss, and hopefully by the end of this show, we will have determined what is coming tomorrow. All that and more on today's episode of The Level 1. Alrighty, everybody. So, first of all, happy Monday. It is the 22nd of July, 2024. I'm DSP. I hope that you're all doing well and you're in good spirits. And if you're not, well, hopefully today's show will do that for you. Um, we have uh, an important agenda today. What we got to do on today's show is figure out what comes next for DSP Gaming. Because right now, we have a few things in the uh, schedule. And those things are important and interesting playthroughs. But what we really need to figure out is what's coming next. We have finished two playthroughs over the weekend. And that is going to free up a good amount of time. Now, we do have a returning playthrough today in Fallout 4, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. Um, and I foresee that probably it'll take maybe a couple of weeks to wrap up Fallout 4 as something balanced in our schedule, which is good. I want to finish it up. It's our big Bethesda playthrough for the year. I certainly don't want to leave it unfinished because um, <clears throat> I'm in a situation where, you know, you put that much time into it. I think it, I want to say it was over 40 hours that we had put into Fallout, correct? And so obviously I want to wrap it up and we're in the midst of a DLC and then there's one more minor DLC and then the end of the story of the game and we're pretty much done because we've done everything else in the game up to this point. So I want to finish that up, and I know it's not going to be what everyone wants. You know, Fallout Mania is over. It started back in April with the Fallout TV show on Prime Video, and, you know, even as we were playing through the game in the month of May, it kind of died out, which is why we gave it a whole month away so that we could focus on the Elden Ring DLC. But I'm bringing it back to finish it up. So it's going to be a good balance with everything else that we're doing. Well, what else are we doing? Well, as you know, we are continuing to play Street Fighter VI. I'm currently at the highest ranked position I've ever been in the game, over 1,600 master ranking points. My M. Bison is getting better and better. And <clears throat> I will be honest with all of you, after having played uh, in that lobby on Friday night where I used different characters, all right, I'm actually getting a craving back to go back into Street Fighter Six and play with everybody else, like Honda, Dalzine, Blanca. Like, I actually want to use them again. So... I am feeling kind of reinvigorated in Street Fighter VI at this point, and uh, I hope that you guys will be along for that ride with me as I try to get other characters to a better level, all right? Now, we're going to talk about that in a moment because that might be heavily affected by what just happened to Evo, okay? Anyway, um, so we got those two things already in the mix. For our late-night chill stream, we currently have Stardew Valley, and here's the thing. In Stardew Valley... All right, I've played this game now for over 20 hours over the course of roughly a month. I really like the game. When we play Stardew Valley together, we have a great interactive, chill experience where we get to talk, hang out, but also you guys help me with the game to get better and to unlock new stuff and to understand things that I need to do. And it's been a really good ride. Okay, it has. It's been a really, really good ride. I really want to keep it in the rotation as a late night chill stream. I feel like it fit in there just like Minecraft, Subnautica, Bassmaster, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, and other games have worked over the years. However, when I played it last time, for some odd reason, it was next to no support. And this is confusing because actually about a month ago, Stardew Valley was consistently the game I was getting the most support for. People were getting into Super Chat Wars, tips, goals were being hit, and I was putting on the hat regularly. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we do a stream and there's like oh, literally nothing. 
I, I think it was like like not even 20 bucks raised. I could be wrong though. But it was I just remember it was a really slow stream. So <clears throat> excuse me. It makes me scratch my head like what is going on? What a drastic shift, even though it's the same game. Fun commentary and gameplay, interactive with the audience. It's not like anything has changed, right? So, you know, I don't know. Anyway, all that being said, we have three games in the rotation. I don't know how much I'll play Stardew. It really depends on how the next stream goes. And by the way, the next stream is later tonight. We'll talk about that in a moment when we get to the schedule. So, what we need now is something else, okay? Something to balance in the schedule to fill in these gap streams. For example, right now, today is Fallout 4 on the day stream, but I have absolutely positively no idea what I'm doing tomorrow. None. Okay? And the whole point is I think today we got to talk out some ideas. I have a couple interesting ones that I would totally be ready to say, okay, approve right now. Um, or we can discuss other things, but I really need to figure out what we're doing by the end of the show. Okay. Um, the thing is we are at a time period right now. We have one month, one month until big new releases begin with Black Myth Wukong, Star Wars Outlaws, the Black Ops 6 beta, among other things. If I remember correctly, around the end of August and the first week of September, no exaggeration, there's something like five to seven video games coming out. Okay? So we have a month. Now, one thing I'm going to be very transparent with all of you about, I'm pretty upset that at Evo, Capcom literally blue-balled everyone when it came to the Marvel vs. Capcom collection. For those who don't know, there's a collection coming out sometime this year that features all of the old-school Marvel and vs. fighting games in one it's a collection people have wanted for ages i literally a couple months ago was talking about this saying i don't know why they don't sell it it would be a gold mine well now they're making it and they had it at evo all right it was there they they people played tournaments on it it was raided by the esrb and the esrb says it's complete the game is ready for sale right now yet they did not give a release date they did not release the game they're just like holding back for some reason if that collection had come out, I'd be playing it t today. I would have changed my schedule around and said, let's do the collection right now because that's something I grew up with. That's something that I have so much knowledge about and so much passion for. I love the Versus series of games. I can show you all kinds of gameplay, combos, strategies, infinites. I, we could go through every single one, arcade mode. I could show you the bosses, the differences between the game engines. We could go online and play a ton of online play against people competitively. There's so much to do in that game series that would be an amazing game. But there's no release date. They didn't even drop a release date during EVO. That doesn't make any sense at all. Why on earth would you have it at EVO? Promote it. They're promoting it. They're advertising it all over. They've got a promotional Twitter account. they got all this going on. And not give a date. That's just, it's mind-boggling, right? And here's my concern. I get the feeling here's what's going to happen, right? That game is going to come out in the midst of all the other releases. Like, how much do you want to bet it's going to come out right there late August or in the midst of September when we've got a zillion other games out that everyone wants to play and see? Now, for the FGC, maybe it won't be a big deal, but for everybody else, like, I'm not going to sit here and drop everything just to play a fighting game. I want to do that right now. We're in the midst of a dead summer. There's nothing else going on this summer. It would be perfect for a month to do it. They're not releasing it. It's like... You know, it's just, there, somewhere over at Capcom, there's some board, not board member, but a management member sitting at a boardroom making an arbitrary decision about how if they release it at this strategic time, it'll help them for a certain quarter or whatever. No actual fucking knowledge of how gaming works. No actual knowledge of the community. They don't see the hype that people have for this game right now and want it. Let's just hold back. Well, guess what? You're going to hold back and what's going to happen game will release it'll do fine in the fighting game circles but if you release it in the fall in the midst of the busiest gaming season of the year it will not get mainstream approval and the thing is that's what they want they want it to get mainstream attention because they want to then have that be the catalyst to say hey look we should make other versus crossover games in the future not just marvel but others as well because this one did so well but 
You can't just release it in the midst of the busiest gaming season and expect results. It's not going to work. So I'm nervous because I thought for sure this was their game plan. It seemed like it was. And now it seems like they're just doing something really stupid, and I don't understand why they're doing that. So it is what it is right now. There's no Marvel collection to play. So that idea is off the table. That was originally my idea. That's what we'll do, but it's gone. It doesn't exist. So what we need to do is we need to focus in on what is available, what could be fun, and what we need to have, you know, for a few weeks. Because basically we've got tomorrow, and then we're going to have one or two streams, essentially, moving forward a week that are kind of empty streams that we need content for. And, of course, there's always many possibilities of things you can do. Um, you know, in my head, I'm debating, you know, do we want to do a longer form game? Maybe not, because if you think about it, let's say we have four weeks, two streams a week. That's like 20 hours, 24 hours. That's not enough for a super long game. Like an RPG, probably 30, 40 hours, there's not enough time. So I don't think we should be starting an RPG or anything like that. That would probably be a very bad idea. Um, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of mulling things over in my head <clears throat> with the time that we'll have uh, of what we can do. So I have a few ideas. All right, I do. And what I'd like to do is share some of those ideas with you and, le and, and let's see what people think, okay? So the first idea <clears throat> is directly tied to what the other idea was because, as you know, with no Marvel collection coming out, right? <clears throat> okay, with no Marvel collection coming out. Oh, he's above me. I was like, where did he go? He was right there. He's above me. Um... There is another possibility. There was a game that they announced at Evo out of nowhere that absolutely no one was expecting. And that game has released. As of right now, it is released on everything. Okay? And that game is SVC Chaos, also known as SNK versus Capcom. At the time when Capcom was making Capcom versus SNK, CVS, SNK was making their own crossover game using... Capcom fighting game properties and other Capcom characters, okay? Now, this game is very weird. What I mean by that is, number one, it barely got any attention when it released because it actually released years after the CVS games released, so it kind of came way too late, okay? That's number one. Number two, it's made by SNK, so it plays similarly to the King of Fighters series, not Street Fighter. Now, it has Street Fighter elements, but it definitely plays very, very different, Okay? than modern fighting games and or even Street Fighter. So it looks a little weird because it looks like the SNK drawing style. It plays a little weird. Um, at the time when it came out, which was early 2000s, okay, it did not get a competitive community, all right? It didn't. It didn't catch on. No tournaments were being held for this game. I know I was in the competitive circles at the time. <clears throat> and no one really put too much time or effort into it. Very few arcades even had it in the United States. Very, almost no one bothered buying it. It did get a, a console port. The console port didn't do well, okay? In Japan, it did all right, because in Japan, the SNK games got a little bit more attention. But overall, for the most part, SVC did not do well, okay? It was not a well-regarded game. I don't even remember a single tournament being held in the Street Fighter community for it. No one really cared because it was an SNK game. Um, <clears throat> now, here's the thing. It just released for all platforms. It released for PC on Steam, PlayStation 4, Xbox, and I think Switch. Did it go on Switch? I don't know if it's on Switch, but it's on like all platforms. And guess what? It's $20. Okay? Yeah, it has online play. It has arcade mode. I, it has what you would want from a fighting game, a modern fighting game. It has the features. So it's 20 bucks, And it's kind of a silly mess around game because it has characters both from SNK and Capcom. You can actually see, uh, you know, M. Bison drawn in the SNK style, which is very different from what you're probably expecting. Um, and it plays in that style too, okay? So right now there's interest in it because it just came out. I don't know if it would retain any interest. I think it would be good, like, if we played it, what I would do is probably do a, mode, a run in arcade mode to see what it plays like, see who the boss is and stuff like that. Then, you know, go online and try a few different characters. And mess around with it. I don't know if I would ever get any. I would get good because here's the thing: 
No one got good at this game. I don't even know how it's played competitively because no one ever really did back in the day. So it's kind of like a starting point. Like everyone would probably be playing this game on the same level because no one played it at any competitive level back in the day. You'll probably see people <clears throat> playing it like Street Fighter, people playing it like King of Fighters. It'll be a very interesting experience to say the least. But at the same time, I don't know. Oh, it's not on Xbox? Never mind. Apparently, it's just on PlayStation and PC and Switch, not Xbox. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I don't know how much longevity it would have, but definitely it would be good variety, right? It would definitely be great variety um, for the streams just to try. And the thing is, we don't have to keep playing it at an extended period of time. We could easily... Uh, get it and play it for a few streams and if it's not that interesting and it dies down and no one really cares we could just stop you know it's 20 bucks it's not a giant money investment it's not like a 50 60 dollar game it's a quick one so even if we get a few streams out of it, it that'd be better than nothing i think it would be pretty funny to try all the different characters but they play like snk but they look they look like street fighter characters you know what i'm saying it'd be pretty weird uh so that's one option and I'm totally open to that. I'm not saying we would commit to playing it long term. I'm just saying, hey, for variety, that certainly would almost be like a weird. It's kind of like a, a, you're going on safari. We're going to uncharted territory. We're going to go play something that no one really ever played, and we're going to see if it's any good. And if not, we can laugh at it, but we don't have to commit to playing it longer than that. You know what I mean? It's kind of a unique experience. I feel. Um. So that's one option. Twenty bucks, right? There you go. Um. Now. Number two option. It's also a game that just came out. So we got that. That just came out. SVC just came out. Then we've got another game that just came out last week <clears throat> that I'm definitely interested in. Um, and I talked about actually getting because I wanted to maybe make it a part of uh, an event coming up called the Nintendo World Championships. NES edition, I think it's called. So what this is is a game for the Switch that just came out just a few days ago. And it is a challenge run style game where... I believe it features something like 20 classic NES games, including Mario, Donkey Kong, some racing, some puzzle, all variety of games. Okay, I think Zelda's in there too. Um, so, I think the cool thing about it would be, because it has a variety of games, I could jump into this and take on various different challenge runs in these different games that are completely different, because that's what the game is, is a series of challenge runs to see, hey, can you complete the challenge? You know, can you, what time can you do it in? Or, you know, how, uh, what's the score at the end? Because that's what it is, is score challenges, you know, beat it in a certain amount of time, stuff like that. Um, and that would be interesting because, number one, it's not just one type of thing. It's a bunch of different classic games. And number two, that can be brought back from time to time for random streams. You know what I mean? Like, we got a, a night where there's nothing going on. Hey, let's bring back the Nintendo World Championships and do a, a challenge run night. And then people in chat can vote. Will Phil do the challenge or will he fail at the challenge? And we get to see if people have confidence in me or not. And then we get to see if I actually do it or not, right? So I think that would be pretty neat. It would be something different to do. And Nintendo World Championships is something that I was thinking of doing a segment of during my digital summer party this coming Saturday, which is a big marathon event. That would be pretty good for variety, right? So there you go. So those are the two ideas that are kind of like, Interesting ideas that I have for things that are going to add into the schedule. Now, keep in mind, we're not going to have tons of open schedule time. We still got Street Fighter 6 being played, Fallout 4 being played, Stardew Valley, and my React Day. So between that stuff going on, that's a lot of time already in the week taken up. I'm only looking for a game or two to fill in the gaps of other streams between that stuff. So that's why I was thinking these kind of games, they're kind of fill-in games. They don't, they're not a giant narrative RPG where we have to play for 80 hours to beat it. Um, you know what I mean? It's, it's, I think it would be pretty good for variety. But I'm open to suggestion of other things as well. If you guys have suggestions of what we should be doing or an idea for something for about a month, but only about a couple streams a week, I'm all ears. All right? So I'm curious what people will have to say. I'm sure right now I'm going to get feedback in the chat on what people are thinking about uh, for, for the new game that will begin. But here's the thing, and I want to make this abundantly clear. This is one of the situations where, because there is no definitive game that is coming out, all right, that is like the game to play, 
No matter what I play, there will be people who are disappointed. Literally, it doesn't matter what I play. You're going to have people complaining I'm not playing what they want. There's nothing I can do about that. I can't please everyone. When there's no giant in-demand release, right now there is no Elden Ring DLC. There is no hot new Resident Evil or survival horror game. There is no you know, online shooter going on. There's nothing that's like the big in-demand thing that you want right now, you see? We got to wait for that. That's coming. Give it a month. You'll have Black with Wukong. You'll have the Black Ops 6 beta. You'll have these other games people want. We got to wait for that, okay? Now, there's one other factor involved here that's very important. In the month of August, I'm going to be doing more reacting than I usually do because I'm going to be doing two different long-form react projects. One is going to be me reacting to the Review Tech USA documentary that June the King is going to be putting out. All right, and that's supposed to be coming out sometime in early August. That's all we know, because I actually asked him, and he said, yeah, probably early August, but not in, set in stone yet. But he was actually going to give me more information when it was available. As of now, you know, there's no set schedule for that yet. So it's unclear when that will release. But I'm going to do a long-form react to that one over on my DSP Reacts channel. In addition, I'm also going to cover my own documentary, when that comes out, all right? Now, that's supposed to be mid to late August, which might be a problem because if it comes out around the same time as all those games, like August 23rd, I'm not going to have a lot of time to focus on it. So what I might have to do is break up my content and do like one day where I react to the documentary the first few hours or first hour or two of it, and then I do gameplay, and then we come back in a couple days and I react to the next chunk of the documentary, and then we do more gameplay. There's not much I can do. If it comes out during that time, it's going to be crazy, and I'm going to have to try to balance everything, okay? I get the feeling that's exactly what's going to happen. I get the feeling it's going to release in late August, and I'm going to have too much to do all at once, which is always what happens. You get a drought of stuff, nothing going on, and then all of a sudden, you get everything everyone wants all at once. You're going to be people like, why aren't you playing more Black Myth Wukong? Wait, why aren't you reacting to your documentary? Wait a minute, why aren't you playing Star Wars Outlaws? Wait a minute, you better be playing that Black Ops 6 beta. Oh, by the way, Marvel vs. Capcom collection is now dropping this week too. <laughs> like, wait, what? How am I supposed to cover all of this? Right? Like, huh? <laughs> so, that's the thing. So, with that being said, we know that also in the month of August, I'm going to be taking some time away from all the gaming to do some reacting. So, that's another reason why I don't think that I should pick a game that's lengthy to be the game that I now put into my schedule. If I choose a 20, 30 hour game, what happens then? If I don't have enough time to get through it and now we have another unfinished playthrough, that would not be good. I'd rather do something that maybe is a time filler that we could jump in and out of at whim or at will, right? Rather than, oh, I committed to a long ass game, right? <laughs> okay, so. I would love to hear your thoughts. Now, as you guys know, I've already said we're not doing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. There's no point in suggesting that. Okay, that's just a waste. I'm not playing that. That's another 60-plus hour game to finish. No time for that. I've already said I'm not interested in this, end, this football game. People keep saying play this football game. I don't care. I don't play sports games. I certainly don't care about college American football. So I don't care about this game. I'm not going to play it and enjoy it if I play it. It seems like a waste of time, right? I want something that at least I have some interest in. I don't have interest in that, okay? Now, if you guys have any other suggestions, I'm all ears, but those two don't make sense for my content, okay? So let me know what you think. I'm, I'm going to be listening right now during this podcast. I'm going to be seeing... So some of the Super Monkey Ball. Yeah, I guess there was a Super Monkey Ball game, right? That came out. I'm not aware of, you know, how challenging it is, how lengthy it is. The last Super Monkey Ball game I played years ago was insanely difficult. Do you remember that? It was really hard. And I was okay with that as long as people were along for the ride. And for the most part, they were. People came by and hung out and supported those streams. But that was years ago. Right? So... Should Monkey Ball be a consideration here? Seems like that's a game that I don't have to necessarily like rush through and beat either. Maybe I could do streams here or there of it, and I don't have to commit to beating it right away, right? There you go. Lucky Gremlin, first of all, Pizza Tower, we already played, and you know I didn't like it, so we're not playing that again. 
Final Fantasy 7, I literally just said no, and you keep putting it in the chat. What is DD2? I don't know what DD2 is. Uh, as for Sea of Stars, I 100% commit to everyone, I'm going to go back to Sea of Stars at some point. I don't think right now is the right time for it. Okay, it just doesn't make sense. I need time to commit to that to beat it, and we don't have time. Oh, Dragon's Dogma 2? No, I already told you that too. That one, if I was going to go back to either game, Final Fantasy 7 or Dragon's Dogma 2, it would be Final Fantasy 7. That's a much better game. But we don't, we don't have time for that. We don't have time for lengthy RPGs. I guess you're not listening to me. We don't have time for lengthy RPGs right now. That's why you literally three of the games you just suggested are all lengthy RPGs. I, I don't have time for that right now. We need games that are easier to drop in, drop out. And Pizza Tower I tried and didn't like, you know? That's when I was getting headaches. I was? When was I getting headaches? I was getting headaches playing, what, Monkey Ball? Oh, man, I don't remember that at all. Oh, that sucked. Ah, <sighs> All right. So, all right, so I would say Monkey Ball is a suggestion. SBC Chaos is a suggestion. And the Nintendo World Championships, they're all valid suggestions. All three of them are good. Okay? But I would like other suggestions as well, all right? And we got to come to a determination today of what I'm going to be playing tomorrow, okay? <clears throat> What's up, Game Boy? How you doing today? Welcome. Okay. All right, anyway, so let me at least... Give you guys the schedule. So today it's Fallout 4 returning. We are actually in the midst of the Nuka Cola World DLC. In fact, we had just headed into the park to, to clear out the parts of the park so that we can finish it up. So that's what we're doing today. We're probably going through and clearing the entire park out. All right. Um, after that, we have the finale of that DLC. Uh, and then after that, we have Automatron, which isn't a very long DLC. I think it's like an hour or two. And then we have the conclusion of the story, which would be going to the Institute, doing those plot lines. And, uh, Choosing who to side with and finishing the game. So, excuse me, over the course of the next couple of weeks, I think we'll get really far and beat Fallout 4, which will be great. That way it's not an unfinished playthrough, okay? Um, tonight, like I said, the late stream is Stardew Valley. I hope you'll join me for that. That should be a good time. Hopefully it does well. Like I said, last stream, I don't know what happened for support, but hopefully we get some support for Stardew tonight. Tomorrow, we're doing something new uh, on the day stream. All right, so we'll see how it goes on the day stream, but I'm up in the air. You know, should it be SVC Chaos? Should it be Nintendo World Championship? Should it be Monkey Ball? Should it be something else? I don't know. Tomorrow night on the late stream, I will do Street Fighter Six, and I'm undecided if I want to play with more Bison and continue my climb in the ranks or if I want to go back. I'm almost feeling like I want to play some Dalsim. Like, I, I played with Dalsim, and I did really well on Friday, and I was like, dude, I feel like, you know what it is? Now I'm using my new joystick. I have no input delay. And I started playing with him. I was like, dude, like everything's gr jiving. Like first attempt, I got his teleport cross up, drive rush, cancel level three combo. I was like, oh shit. Like I was feeling the groove. I was like, dude, I want to play with Dal Seymour now. <laughs> I was like, oh man, I'm feeling it. So <clears throat> maybe I'll, maybe I should do that tomorrow night. Maybe I should get Dal Seymour, get the dust off of him and play with Dal Seymour a little bit tomorrow night. Um, And then I'm off on Wednesday. Thursday, <clears throat> it'll be more Fallout 4. And Stardew Valley, Friday again, with, you know, something on the day stream on Friday and Friday Night Fights. Saturday is the big digital summer party, all right? What are we doing? Well, we got a lot. My water is on, on camera. It was vibrating. We got a lot going on during the digital summer party on Saturday. First of all, it's an all-day marathon event, okay? And it's going to be fun. There's going to be uh, some booze involved. This When I go on my day off this week, I'm going to get some booze. I don't know what because I don't really have anything right now in the house. Um, so I have to see what they have. Maybe see if I can get something summertime drink, maybe a couple of beers or something. I don't know. I got to see what they got at the liquor store. Um, so I'll have some booze. Um, we're going to do a, a few different events. Okay. First off, I'd be totally down to do some of the Nintendo world championship stuff. So if I get it this week, which I probably should, we could do some challenge runs in that, see what's fun there. And especially if I'm drinking a little bit, it might be a little fun to get me buzzed and see if I can still do the challenges. Right. That's number one. <clears throat> Number two, um, I probably will do some fighting game stuff. Now, will it be 
Street Fighter VI? Will it be SVC Chaos, right? Will it be, you know, it could be anything, but it could be, it should be fun just to do some random fighting game stuff in the midst of this, uh, the marathon. Um, number three, <clears throat> I think we should do a tier maker. I just don't know what yet. I looked it up and last year, the tier maker that we did was like a classic American cuisines. So maybe we shouldn't do food, but then the question is like, what else should we do? What else can we rank the summertime themed for like a tier maker? I don't know. And then, excuse me, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, likely we'll just have a hangout session where we just talk for a little bit and I'll drink. And uh, and then, um, you know, based on what else you guys want, we could do, like some people had already said, can we do some Stardew Valley and stuff like that? Like, I'd be okay with that. The whole point of this marathon is you guys just wanted to hang out and break up my content and just do something different, which I'm okay with. I'm definitely ordering food, by the way. And I'm very strongly leaning towards ordering some barbecue. I haven't had barbecue in a long time now. So I was thinking maybe I should just order some barbecue for delivery rather than make my my wife cook again. Like she cooked last year, which was great. I remember she made, I think it was like pulled pork or pulled chicken with mac and, uh, macaroni salad and stuff. And it was really good. But I think this, I think this year, I think she's not, I don't think she's working Saturday. I don't even know. See what I, I remember I've told you guys, my schedule is changing a lot right now. And because of that, I can't even keep track of what's going on. Like, my wife works different days and does different shifts now. And it's confusing. Like, I don't, I literally don't know if she's home on Saturday or not. I, I have to ask her. And she just, I think she just found out what day she was working this week. And that's why I don't even know. We don't even have it written on our calendar or anything yet. So it's confusing. It makes me get, kind of confused in my head what's going on so i think she'll be here on saturday but if it's a day off then i don't necessarily might want to make her cook so i don't know i'll have to think about it but there's gonna be food all right there will definitely be food um during the event so there'll be food there'll be liquor hanging out just having a chill summertime you know good time together um there'll be gaming of various different things whatever you guys want in any order the whole point is i want this to be a chill session this is not, oh, we have to do this and this and this in this order for this amount of time. It's not like that. This is going to be a very casual event where we just kind of relax together. It's not meant to be a super serious event. It's more to just break up my scheduling and do different various things and have fun together, okay? More relaxed, more chill atmosphere, laid back, have a few brews, right? That's what it's all about. That's what the summertime is supposed to be about right? So that's what we're doing on Saturday, okay? Sunday will be my normal React day, and the cool thing about it is after my clip show on DSP Reacts, we are going back to Mario and Sonic at the 2012 London Olympics co-op for my retro React stream on DSP Throwback, and that's excellent because guess what actually starts this week? The real Olympics. So it's cool to have the real Olympics going on while I'll be reacting to the Olymp Olympics video game. I think that'll be pretty sweet and timely and fun to do. Um, and then again, Monday, Tuesday, we'll balance the games that I'm currently playing. So that's kind of the week. And then, like I said, since we'll be heading into August after that, we'll see what's going on with these documentaries coming out that I'll be reacting to long form on DSP Reacts, and we'll go from there. Because I may definitely will have to have some days dedicated to that kind of stuff. Okay? Okay. So. Excuse me. I hope that you guys uh, are excited for all of that. It sounds good to me. Good variety and good fun. And uh, I need your feedback. SVC Chaos, Nintendo World Championships, the new Super Monkey Ball game, or something else, but it cannot be some lengthy RPG-style game. We don't have time for that. This is supposed to be essentially filling in the gaps. All right? Filling in the gaps of the schedule. Someone just said, King Lunar says, what about a video game tier maker? Those are best. Hey, we could rank all the FromSoft games and, and Souls-like games. We could rank Mario games. We could, yeah, we could do something like that. I'd be down for that. Um, let me take a look here. Search.
Yeah, look at this. The ultimate Souls-like tier list. Souls-like games. Souls and Souls-like games. Yeah, let me click on this. We could do that. We could rank all those games. What the? Agent love. Here we go. What the? Oh, God. Pop-up. Stupid pop-up ads. No. Oh, that's the worst. Get out of there. Ashen, Blasphemous, Bloodborne, Code Vein, Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 3, Dark Souls 1, Demon Souls, Demon Souls, I guess it's original Demon Souls, the Demon Souls remake, Jedi, Fallen Order is in there, Hollow Knight, what is this? I don't even know what this game is, I can't even read it, Lords of the Fallen, Neo and Neo 2, Remnant, Dark Souls 2, Sh uh, Something of the first, something edition, whatever it's called. Scholar of the First Sin. The Surge, The Surge 2, Sekiro, and Titan Souls. This one isn't really updated, though. This doesn't have recent games. Like, this one doesn't have Lies of P. This one doesn't have Another Crab's Treasure. But you see, what, you see, we could do that. We could, we could do a fun ranking of that stuff. We just have to find a good, like, there's many different ones here we could do that people have created. Oh, my God. All right, this one's absolutely stupid. This one is listing Kena. Kena Bridge of Spirits as a Souls-like. It is not a Souls-like. That's ridiculous. This is, way too, <laughs> this is way too of an open interpretation of what a Souls-like is. And again, this one doesn't have another Crab's Treasure. Uh, does this one have Lies of P? This one does have Lies of P. This is more recent, but I feel like it has way too many games. Like I don't, I don't recognize 90% of the games in this list. <laughs> but we could we could definitely do that. I'd be like if that's an idea to rank games in a tier, tier maker, that'd be I think that'd be fun. We just gotta figure out what we want to rank, right? Summer blockbuster movies tier list? I'm sure they have something like that. Hold on. Oh, look at 1990 to 2022 blockbuster monster movies. Best summer blockbusters by decade. Oh, this could be cool. Oh, but this is dumb. This is dumb because it lists a whole bunch of blockbusters, but it lists the decade. Screw the decade. We'll, we'll actually rank the blockbusters. Like, I'll just, I'll rename these things. You can change this. Yeah, you can edit this. Oh, yeah, we could do this. This is cool. We could rank summer blockbuster movies. Here's, here's some that they got. Anchorman, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Armageddon, The Avengers, Back to the Future, Barbie, Batman, Jurassic Park, Shrek, Spider-Man, Top Gun, the original, by the way, E.T., uh, Face Off, Pirates of the Caribbean. That would be a cool one to do. That would actually be a really neat one to do. Rank summer blockbuster movies against each other. And we all argue about what's better. Right? All right. That, that's definitely a good idea. That's de one of these things, something like this, right? It's pretty good. So let's talk more about that over the, uh, over the week. And let's figure out uh, what we want to do for that. Okay? I think that would be a really good fit for the event. So, nice. <laughs> Armageddon was a great movie, if you say so. <laughs> if you say so. Right, anyway, so yeah, so that's coming up Saturday. I'm excited. Give me some feedback, but we really got to figure out what I'm doing tomorrow. Let's talk about this over the course of today. What game should I play tomorrow? Okay, I'm totally open to many suggestions. Now, there's one quick thing I want to discuss about Evo. And, you know, I hate to say I told you so. Really, I do. I hate to say it. It's funny I end up saying it so often because I'm right all the time. But but I, I hate to say I told you so. But who is the character 
that I have been having the absolute most problem with in Street Fighter VI. The character who I've been complaining about, saying I feel like the character is way overpowered, the character has too many options, the character is too safe, the character literally in certain situations doesn't have to have a brain cell activated to play because it's such a flowchart character, and the character just has too many advantages, right? dominates probably the entire bottom half of the cast without even trying, right? Of course, the character I've been talking about is Lily. Lily is a big problem for some people, not for me. Uh, the character I'm talking about is Cammy. I think that Cammy is broken in Street Fighter VI. I feel like she is crazy overpowered. Every move safe. Every move cancels to another move. Every move has an option to get out. Every move is a guess, and if it hits, great. If it doesn't, oh well, on to the next guess. Never at a disadvantage. It's very hard to beat Cammy's, especially online. You know, she tries to dive kick. You can't even react to the dive kick to block it or anti-air it. So, it's very frustrating. So, ladies and gentlemen, despite people arguing with me, saying, oh, Cammy's not top tier. Cammy's not this. Take a look. And I, then you look at statistics. It's like, well, then why is Cammy the number two most played character in Legend? Meaning... There's tons of Akumas in Legend, and then there's Kami's. She's the number two character. Why would that be? Hmm, right? How do they all get to Legend? And then, on top of that, if you take a look at some recent results for tournaments and things, Kami has been very highly registered in tournaments. Character Kami's doing good. Guess who won Evo? Punk the God. Guess who Punk the God is? The world's best Kami player in Street Fighter Six. Guess how he won? Go watch it right now. Go watch... Punk the God in the finals of Evo. Watch exactly how he plays. Now, I'm not saying he's a pattern player. I'm not. He's not. He's the opposite. Yes, he uses the guessing 50-50 patterns in the corner, but he also has insanely good gameplay everywhere on the screen. He, is, he uses the character's strengths and also does innovative things with the character as well. That's why he just won Evo. So I'm not taking anything away from that guy whatsoever at all what i'm saying is cammy was fucking crazy good to begin with and then he added his skill to win evo with her now first of all congratulations you do punk is actually the first official american to win big at evo when the japanese and other international players were there like no american has really won evo before since it's been a big international affair and he just did it so that is a first it's unprecedented and it's amazing to do that and represent our country in that way okay <clears throat> but, man, if that's not evidence that Cammy is fucking crazy good, I don't know what is. Take a look at his gameplay with her. He's got people locked the fuck down. They can't move. They, you know, like, what the fuck? When's my turn? When is my turn? This is insane that she's just constantly on offense, on offense. That's, it's funny because people commentating are like, yeah, man, the flashiness of drive rush and drive cancel in Street Fighter Six makes it a great game to watch. Yeah, that's literally all Cammy does. She finds a way to constantly be in your face, drive rushing in your face constantly, and that's why she's so fucking annoying. If you don't have a true reversal, you can't really get her off of you at all. Jasper, what did you do? You just made a big noise. Jasper, what was that? Huh? I got to see what he did, guys. Hold on. All right. I don't know what Jasper did. I just searched the house. I don't see anything, but he did. There was a loud noise. I was like, what the... Oh, he's, he's hyper. He's running all around now. Anyway, um, so yeah. So the point I'm making is Cammy is incredibly good in Street Fighter Six. She always was. People who want to talk shit are just people who either don't play or are morons who just want to downplay what I say because they think that everything I say is wrong because they don't like me, not because there's no merit to what I, I say because there's tons of merit to what I say. Cammy is insanely good in Street Fighter Six. Crazy hard to beat, in my opinion, okay? Now, here's the problem. You know what's going to happen as a result of Punk winning Evo? You're going to see an incredible increase in the amount of people picking Cammy. Cammy was already a problem. Meaning, when you went to ranked, almost all you saw was Cammy. Right? <clears throat> like, what is going on? So, yeah, like, to me, like, I'm worried now. If I go to play Street Fighter 6 online, it's going to be nonstop Cammy's for like three weeks. Until finally it dies down. If you remember, last year, that the problem was, uh, was it Ken and who else? There were two characters that were the problem last year, right after Evo. 
So I get the feeling the same exact thing will happen, right? <clears throat> it's going to be the same annoying shit. So I guess we'll see what happens, but uh, <laughs> I get the feeling it's going to be Cami Palooza now, right? Moving on. So it was Luke last year. That's right. It was Luke last year. It was a crazy amount of fucking Luke players online out of nowhere, right? <clears throat> right. Ken and Luke. Yeah, that's right. It was a bombardment of Kens and Lukes for like two months. Ugh. So anyway, we'll see. But congrats to Punk. That was an amazing gameplay. Insanely good player. This is not some fluke. This guy already, you could see he's been grinding a while to get to the level he's at. Um, he deserves the win. Innovative player, not just a guy who's doing patterns, which is great. Um, obviously. But man, Cammy is a good fucking character in that game, and it makes me nervous because there's too many. <laughs> there's too many. All right. Okay. Um. All right. Well, that's that's all I got for the show. Let's talk about what games you guys want to see me play. But in the meantime, first, let's do shoutouts. We start off today. With RAC1190 gifting five memberships to the community. Thank you, RAC. It looks like Jeremiah, Spidey, 5000, Kyle, and Valdemaris got one. But I don't see the fifth one going out. <clears throat> um, I don't know if it didn't go out yet. Likely it will. I've seen an issue where it seems to take a while sometimes for the gifted memberships to go out. But it looks like they do eventually go out. So uh, it is what it is. I can't see the fifth one, but hopefully... Wow, chats, AI-generated chat summary says viewers in chat are reacting to Street Fighter Six and Phil's win. I won Evo. According to AI-generated chat, I won Evo. That's amazing. <laughs> Can you guys believe... Who knew that? But well, I believe AI. I believe everything that AI tells me. Okay? <clears throat> there you go. Very nice. <laughs> All right. So... Thank you for those gifted memberships. Um, let's see here. Gray Charger got banned because they were saying something stupid. Okay. Uh, Neon Cat, mm, two months as a member, says DK64. Absolutely not. For Retro Sake, three months as a member. Thank you for that. Uh, Retro Parasite did a super chat. So Retro Parasite is our first super chatter. Hold on. There we go. I'm trying to find the leaderboard. He says, what about introducing a sub Saturday where subs vote and play each game an hour? No commitment would add some variety. First of all, I don't understand what you mean. Are you saying members or subscribers? There is no subscriber nomination process that doesn't exist there could be a member like only poll there could there could be members only polls that i can run or members only threads that i can run on the community tab but the problem with that is all the regular standard members who all got them for free because of the argentinian loophole on youtube that they still haven't closed so right now i probably have no lie a thousand fake members who all can nominate in that and that wouldn't make sense because you're just gonna have a bunch of trolls and idiots trying to skew everything. So the only way I would be able to do it is to do above the standard member level. So it would have to be like super members or ultra members only who have that. And guess how many of those I have? Probably like 10. So honestly, what you're suggesting would work if YouTube's system wasn't broken. If, if YouTube's system was working and everyone would just be a, a real paid member, then yeah, but no, right now, I've got over a thousand members, out of which more than half are fake. So you got a bunch of trolls and, and jerks who are just going to skew it and be stupid about it. So, <clears throat> sadly, number one, it's not viable because YouTube system's broken. Number two, there would actually have to be someone working on that to make it happen. Like, I can't sit there and run multiple different polls and things and then say, okay, here's the top 10 games and then figure out how I'm going to do them. Plus, another thing you got to understand is. People who do that kind of stuff usually are big streamers who are a lot of money. So they're like, oh, on today, it's sub Saturday. We're going to play 10 different games that I just bought just to play for today. Yeah, so they can drop $200 on sub Saturday on random games because they're probably going to make $1,000 that day. I'm not. You know what I mean? So I can't just be frivolously buying games 
to only play them for one session, one day for an hour, and then throw it away. Okay? <clears throat> so, I appreciate the suggestion. Sadly, right now, it's just not viable because of all the issues on YouTube. Okay? Um, Parasolo, 38 months as a member. So, I want to go to Evo at least once. Seems like a lot of fun. You know, I will say this. I will definitely say this. From what I'm seeing, modern Evo is so different. From what old Evo used to be, it probably is fun to go to if you're a fan of fighting games. When I used to go to Evo, it was literally, you're sitting in the ballroom, you're waiting for your turn to be called, you sit there all fucking day, if you leave, you get yelled at because you're not there, you might get disqualified, so you're stuck in the ballroom. Sometimes you'll play some casual play against people on a setup, sometimes you go into a side tournament because you got nothing better to do. It's just a lot of waiting, and waiting, waiting and waiting and most of the time the it, things that would be fun would be like oh go hang out with the people outside of the venue right go get, get some food or whatever today they basically turned evo into a convention evo isn't just a tournament anymore it's a convention you go there and there's things to see there's a whole floor with booths right so you see exhibitions from capcom and other vendors artists you know they have artist alley they have things people selling stuff they have all kinds of stuff going on in there. It feels to me like they turned Evo into like Comic-Con light, but it's for fighting game fans, right? So if you go to Evo, you're going to be walking around buying stuff, taking pictures, meeting people for the first time who maybe you know from online communities, you know, networking, getting some food, but you know, buy, you know, doing some fun stuff with merch, probably entering side tournaments, probably playing against people from all over the world in casual play in the games that you like. Then you're actually playing in the tournaments you entered as well. It seems to me like it's more of a fun event. And, you know, that's just, to me, I'll be honest, it's a little disappointing because I wish it was like that when I was a part of it. It wasn't. It really was more like a sweaty ass room full of dudes just sitting around waiting to fucking play a video game. It wasn't a, even much of a spectator event back then. You know what I mean? We were we were grassroots. We were a group of people who cared so much about the games. We didn't care about the money. We didn't care about all. We just wanted to play. Like this was our opportunity to play people from all over the world and get experience and absorb knowledge on a game that had no online play. You had to play it in person. Today, it's a completely different event that honestly looks like something I probably would really enjoy, but. I'm not going back to Evo, you know? There's no point. <laughs> I'm not going to compete in anything. Oh, excuse me. So, yeah. All right, so Parasolo, yeah, you probably would enjoy Evo. It looks, I, I'm going to be honest, from seeing what I've seen, I'm going to recommend it. It looks good. It looks like good, clean fun with a lot of things to do rather than just kind of being stuck playing in a tournament. And by the way, since Evo's in Vegas... You also have opportunity to leave the venue when you're done and go enjoy Las Vegas as a tourist as well. So it's like a good, complete package of everything, right? I feel like, yes, it, it would be a fun thing to do for someone. I would actually, from, from what I've seen, I've had a complete change of attitude. I would actually probably recommend it. It looks good. <laughs> okay. Okay. What got me out of the competitive games all the years ago? My back injury. I was a competitive Street Fighter player all the way through uh, 2007. In 2007, I started to feel very burnt out doing it because I had done it for three to four straight years. I had basically kind of done it all besides win the big one. You know, I had won all my regional qualifiers in the, in the games that I was playing. Um, I had traveled all over, played a bunch of players. At the end of 2007 tournament season, I was kind of like feeling very burnt out and like I, I kind of want to take a break from it. And then my injury happened where... I severely herniated a disc in my lower back. I got shooting pain and or numbness in my legs. I couldn't really drive long distances or travel on the highway or anything like that anymore. It was very uncomfortable for me. So because of that, I basically kind of phased out the competitive fighting game stuff. And I just became kind of a console gamer. And that's what got me into being a YouTuber. So if that injury hadn't happened, I might have continued after a little break. I might have felt reinvigorated, especially when Street Fighter 4 hit. I might have actually gotten heavily into it. but what ended up happening was I became a YouTuber and got prominence doing that. And then when the other games were coming more popular, Street Fighter 4, I liked them, don't get me wrong, but I didn't have the desire 
to go back to that lifestyle of the grind of traveling and playing and spending money and all of that again when i could just be a youtuber at home be popular make money enjoy what i'm doing with a variety of games and not having to risk traveling with how bad my back was so really things just kind of change and there's not much you can really do about that that's just life right <laughs> Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of Q&A now, but I just want to say to everyone, thanks for chilling with me here this morning. Please support the stream if you can, as you know. Number one, uh, I always try to raise 50 bucks of tips every stream. That's my goal. If I can do that today, that would be outstanding. Thanks to anyone who supports the stream, but anything appreciated. A super chat, super sticker, membership, gifted membership, or tip. Thanks in advance to anyone who supports this stuff. I really do uh enjoy your company and thanks for coming to hang out with me today and uh let's see what you guys want to talk about by the way please give me your suggestions on what to do tomorrow that's what i really need help with right now i need to figure out what game should i start right now i think tomorrow would be a great opportunity either for to check check out svc chaos and maybe try it on pc that's the thing did anyone check out the pc requirements for svc chaos because that could be a good test for when the Marvel collection comes out. I can get it on PC, play it on Steam with my joystick, and test it and see how it runs. I would hope it runs good, because if that's the case, that's a good test for MV MVC collection, right? <clears throat> Dave the Diver? What is Dave the Diver? I don't know what that game is. A million people have mentioned it, but the reason that people seem to mention it is because they're like, oh, the main character kind of has like a face, like a beard like you. So because of that, it's cool because, you know, it's a character that looks like you. Big deal, but what is the game? Like, what is Dave the Diver? <clears throat> oh, yeah? My Ruin says you should have zero issues playing Chaos on the mini PC. I might get it. I might get it and try it tomorrow then. Just for the heck of it. Mess around with it. That would be cool to have a first fighting game on the PC to test it out and see how it runs. <clears throat> I'll run it at 120 hertz. I will. I'll run it at 120 hertz, 60 frames, and hopefully have no input delay. That'd be sweet. Dwarf Fortress is a free chill city builder. What what the hell are you talking about? Who was talking about Dwarf Fortress? I don't even know what that means. Who was talking about that? Yeah, Hihachi is back, but I don't really care. I'm not going back to uh Tekken 8 at this point. It's too much of an investment. You know? That is completely incorrect. Memory Gant says. 120 hertz, 60 frames, and 60 hertz, 60 frames are exactly the same thing. Wrong. As proven scientifically in a video that we watch by Linus Tech Tips, uh, where they tested it, you get better response time with the higher hertz. Even if it's not running at that frame rate, you get better response time at the higher hertz. Completely incorrect. <laughs> nice try, though. Wow, that wrong emote is great now. Look how clear that text is on there. Oh, wow, I really like that version. <clears throat> Would I consider bringing back Dante's Inferno? I, I should mention this. So now, for those who don't know, Dante's Inferno, one of my missing playthroughs that never actually was seen on YouTube because YouTube kept banning and removing it back in the day in 2010, is going live slowly over on DSP Throwback. In fact, part four went live this morning. The game is legit good. The combat is fun and engaging. The plot is actually interesting. There's some gross stuff. I'm not going to lie. There's some real bad gore. There's some sexual content that's pretty bad. I don't mean, oh, nudity. I mean, there's some pretty bad other stuff, if you know what I mean. Um, But the game itself, I'm watching it. I'm like, dude, this game is way better than I remember it. Like, the game looks like it would legit be super fun to play. You just got to be okay with that really extreme stuff that they put in it. Um, so, yeah, part four, if you're not watching it yet, I recommend go over to DSP Throwback. Take a look at the Dante's Inferno playthrough. It's kind of sad that I never got to beat it because YouTube wouldn't allow it back in the day. They didn't like the gore. They didn't like the nudity and the sexual content. They couldn't take it, and they shut it down. Now it's allowed. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, a lot of those videos are demonetized. You can't put ads on the videos that have the extreme stuff. So I'm not really making anything on the playthrough. I'm only really uploading it there for posterity purposes. So if someone can finally see it. Like, you guys have never seen it. 
it's never been live on YouTube. You can finally see it now because that playthrough's never been live. That's a first time playthrough right now. So I hope you'll give it a look, but it looks great. Yeah, maybe eventually I would go back and play it. I'm obviously not going to do it now because we're putting up the old playthrough, right? It wouldn't make sense to be putting up the old playthrough on one channel and playing the game on the other channel. That would be pretty stupid. Maybe in the future I would look into do it, but now, you know, I'm not going to do it exactly now. Bill, I don't think you were listening to me. I've already answered that. He says, has June the King given any indication when your documentary will be released? He basically said, definitely in August. He's thinking, unless there's a delay, which he hasn't told me yet. But he's saying, definitely in August. But... Early August is going to be Review Tech USA's documentary. Like, that's coming first. So, that one comes first. Once that's out and done, then likely mine is next on deck. Um, But he hasn't said 100% if it's actually coming out in August yet. I I'm going to be honest. I'm nervous that he's it's going to come out that last week when there's a million games. And it's like, how am I going to do all that? I don't know. That's going to be tough. We'll have to figure it out together somehow. Chat isn't currently playing anything right now. Excuse me. Like I said, the next game, she looks like she's interested in Star Wars Outlaws, but she's not playing any games right now. AMS says, do you think his doc on you will have potential to be non-biased because he reached out to you for your own take? The way I see it is this. He is going to amass as much information as he can get that is public on the internet, and he's going to formulate a documentary and an opinion based on that. Sadly, the vast majority of information and opinion about me on the internet is negative, right? Let's be honest. It is. So you're going to have 90% negativity in this documentary because it's 90% negativity about me on the internet. There's not much you can do about that. Now, there were certain situations and cases where he asked me specifically for my take or my explanation of something and i tried to always give him to the best of my ability my take or my explanation on something so how that factors into the documentary i have absolutely no idea i'll tell you this there were some times he asked me something i answered he's like actually that completely jives with my research on you so great i mean it seems like everything's in line and then there was a couple times where he asked me and i answered he's like that doesn't seem to be in line with what i found and i'm like well i don't know what you found because that's the internet like for, i'll give you an example in the FGC, there was a lot of people who didn't like me, but the people who knew me in person really liked me. They knew me as a good player, a, a good sport, and a person who actually actively wanted to run tournaments and be a positive guy. Online, I was a heinous villain. That was the point. I was supposed to be the heel of the community. It got people to love to hate me, so they would come to tournaments to see me play and hopefully lose. They would root against me, right? That, that was the point. That was the whole thing going on with my persona back in the 2000s in Street Fighter. So. Do you think any of the people who I knew back then in person are going to be online now to talk? No. All you're going to be able to do is go back. You're going to see the awful forum posts, the people who hated my guts crapping on me. That's the stuff you'll find archived. You won't find the people who went to tournaments saying, oh, yeah, it was great. DSP ran an amazing event. Wow, he was super good at Super Turbo back then. Instead, all you're going to see is forum threads from SRK of people shitting on me, right? That So that's what I mean, like, What's documented on the internet isn't representative of real life, but that's what you'll find if you're researching shit like this, and there's nothing that can be done about that. All I can do is give you my take as I'm watching the documentary and say, well, here's how it was from my perspective and present my side, but that's it. That's all that can be done, right? So I very much guarantee you that there's going to be a ton of negative shit, but it's going to give me a lot of opportunity to elaborate give back more supplemental information on the stuff he found and give my take, which is good, right? Like, that's a good thing to be able to do that. And and by the way, I don't think that June the King is out to get me. Like, I, I yes, the, the documentary is likely going to have a lot of negativity about me and my mistakes and things I did over the years that were bad. That doesn't mean that he's like 
oh, I really need to destroy Phil here and just make him look like shit or anything like that. I don't think that's his intention whatsoever. I think it's his intention to make the most comprehensive documentary on me ever done because there's always been people who do it, but it's fragmented, right? Like you've got Frederick Knudsen, who kind of talked about the fighting game stuff, but only went up to a certain point. You got guys like Turkey Tom, who barely grazed the surface of half of my history and focused, hyper-focused in on certain parts that are pretty stupid, right? So now you're going to have someone who actually just covers the whole thing from start to finish, which is why it's his longest documentary ever. Gives me opportunity to talk about my whole history, right? So I think that's going to be good. But like I said, it also depends on when it releases. If it comes out that time when it's super busy with games, it's going to be hard to do a full react to it. So like I said, I might have to pick and choose uh, the parts. Like I probably want to respond to the, anything from the early days, like my Street Fighter days um, and my early YouTube days and stuff like that. I'm really not interested in talking anything about all the nonsense that's happened in the last five, six years about my finances and shit. Number one, it's no one's fucking business. Number two, no one has it right. I've already said my piece on it. My piece hasn't changed. My my, my, my statements on this stuff are always going to remain the same. So what's the point of me sitting here for an hour watching him just go over a bunch of bullshit people made up and just say, that's not true, that's not true, that's not true. Okay, Phil, we'll show evidence of what you're saying. No, because it's innocent until proven guilty and you haven't proven anything. You made a ton of accusations right? With consequential evidence that doesn't prove anything, it could all be fabricated, which it is. So I don't have to prove anything at all. I just ignore that bullshit. That's what I mean. Like, I, There's no point for me to sit there and just say, it's not true. It's not true. It's not true. It's not true. Oh, we'll prove it. If I prove it, now I put myself at great risk. I have to show you my personal finances. I have to show you how the business runs. I have to show you online accounts which then is exactly what my haters want because they want to be inside my life so they can fuck with me even further. No, I'm not going to do that. I don't care about the accusations because they're bullshit. Who fucking cares about what I spend my money on? Who cares if I play a mobile game, right? This stuff is so dumb and stupid. It's just mind-numbingly idiotic that anyone even gives a fuck about it. And it's not true regardless. So who cares? I'm done wasting my time on it. That's, again... That's why I did the side scrollers interview. You want my take? Go watch the five hour interview and leave me alone. I got nothing else to say on. I, my stance will not change, right? So that's what I mean. Like, I'll, I'll react to the parts of the documentary that I have stuff to add. I have nothing to add about any of that bullshit from the last four or five years. It's all the same shit, rehashed, reset over and over. Nothing new to add. Always the same argument, always bullshit. So I'm nothing to say. Why waste time on that? So it might be that I like cut it in half. I, I react to the first half or two thirds of it. And then the that part I just cut out. And then I see what like his final thoughts are. And I react to that, right? I don't know. We'll see. <clears throat> okay. Yes. Carlos says, Ken, Ed, and Bison dominated the top 32. No Luke in the top 16 is crazy. Yeah, it's a complete flip from last year. I was shocked that there were that many Eds. There were two Eds in the top six. I was like, what? I didn't know Ed was that good. Like, I knew Ed was good. I played against him online. And he seems like he has some really sound strategies. I didn't know he was that good. I mean, that's crazy. I, you know, I thought he was like mid-tier, but he might be way better than what we thought, right? Uh, first tip of the day has come in, but I also got a super chat. Oh, uh, let's see. Gabriel did a super chat and says, I love when you call people out for not paying attention. <laughs> well, I mean, if I literally just did a, a big segment about something and then someone comes in and asks the question of what I just talked about, it's like, oh my God. The good thing is on YouTube, you have the ability to rewind. So if I say that, just rewind and go watch the segment you want the answer from, right? Okay. First tip of the day has come in.
stack of shit. Says when you and Mike Klum were in talks, Jaha and others were talking shit about you on Twitter. Of course they were. Of course they were, right? Because that's the thing that, oh, now is the time to jump on the bandwagon of hate and finally I could get a moment of attention for myself. And it's like, huh? What are you even talking about, right? Like, like here's the thing about Jaha, all right? Back in the day, he was known as the bully of the FGC. He was. He was known as the guy who, like, would talk shit, and then he would actually, like, punk you in real life, and sometimes he got into altercations at tournaments and stuff, okay? The reason that he was always in my face back then is because I was an asshole. I was a big mouth, braggadocious shithead. I said and did things that were incredibly harmful because I thought it was helping the community with causing drama. In reality, a lot of people didn't like that, and he was one of the people who I feel rightfully was calling me out for it, okay? So if you look in perspective of who I was back then, I actually don't feel like his hatred towards me was unwarranted at all. Looking back at it now, as a 42-year-old adult, I'm like, I was a complete idiot 20 years ago. I said and did dumbass things. I tried to cause problems for people. You know, I harassed people in the FGC. I was essentially a really bad troll, okay? So Jaha hating on me in the 2000s and wanting to beat my ass was pretty much well-deserved, okay? But I'm not that guy anymore. I've completely changed. I have nothing to do with that. I don't do that shit. If you look at me now, I'm literally the opposite of that. I don't go after and harass people. I don't do online drama. I'm not that kind of person. I very well could be, because look at how many YouTubers are. And look how affluent they've gotten doing it, right? They literally make have livings. Fucking hating on people, shitting on people, causing internet drama. I'm the opposite of that. Correct? I am. I don't do that. I want to stay away. I just want to stay here in my lane, make content for you guys, hang out and be chill. That's all I care about. I look back at my old self, the 20-year-old Phil, and I'm like, dude, that's someone who in today I would like to beat the shit out of that person because that person was an asshole. And I regret that uh, very, very much. That's why I publicly apologized. I've apologized to a few people behind the scenes for it because I know that it was wrong what I did back then. Okay. I publicly admit that now. For anyone in the modern day, to think that I am the same person from 20 years ago and to come out of the woodwork to crap on me and want to be involved, I mean, what? <laughs> right? You know, I can't fault Jaha for 20 years ago hating on me. I was a complete piece of shit. 100% agree there. Today, why would someone come out and be like, oh yeah, I remember 20 years ago that guy's an asshole. Let's crap on him now. Huh? Like, you're still on this 20 years later. This is what you've done with your life in the last 20 years is that you want to crap on someone 20 years later for something they did 20 years ago. More power to you, I guess, but it's kind of outdated. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of fucking weird. Don't you think? That's just a little odd that 20 years later, someone's like going to come out and crap on you for something you did that you're not representative of who you are today. You know what I mean? Like, huh? Well, by the way, sack of shit, I'm not going to put your name like that on my leaderboard. So there you go. Um... So yeah, I'm not going to lie, it is a little odd. And I, I'm not going to lie either. It was a little odd that Mike Klum was like, yeah, I want to reach out to that kind of people. I was like, why? You want to talk to 20-year-old bullies? Like, you literally want to talk to someone who bullied people 20 years ago and give them the opportunity to have a voice to bully again. That's what you're doing. Like, why would you do that? Like, no one in the FGC associates with that guy anymore. So why would you want to pull his name out of the woodwork to get him involved in anything, you know? And again, I want to make this clear. I agree that 20 years ago, I probably should have had my ass beat for the stuff that I said and did. Not today. Today, I'm a completely different dude. I've apologized. I want nothing to do with that. It's my, I acknowledge my shortcomings from when I was younger. Like I said, modern day 42-year-old Phil wants to beat the shit out of 22-year-old Phil. Because I look back, I'm like, oh, it's embarrassing. I'm a fucking cringe lord idiot who just said shit just to piss people off. What a loser. What an asshole, right? But to bring that up today, like that's something that's pertinent, is not. And I think, sadly, I think that that's the deal, is that with Mike Klum's documentary, he wants to drudge that shit up for drama purposes so people will want to watch the documentary. Yeah, but it doesn't, it doesn't apply anymore. So what's the point? Unless the story arc is, oh, but now look at how this person has grown and changed, then that's different. And I think that's kind of where, where that documentary was going to be going, is bring up the, the shit, the drama of the past, 
and all these people that don't like Phil, but now show that he's nothing like that anymore. So is it really fair to hold these negative associations with him when he's not that person that you remember, right? So there you go. <clears throat> Iron Man, the power says I should play Luigi's Mansion 2. How long is Luigi's Mansion 2? Anyone know? Oh my god, excuse me. What's up, Rush fan? X Shooter, thanks for your super chat. Yeah, I'm excited for some Fallout 4 today. It should be fun. Especially because we weren't, haven't played it for so long. It should be good to bring it back. What game should you play today? God of War, Ragnarok, or Ghost of Tsushima? Depends on which kind of game you want to play. Do you want a more linear game with some epic fights, great graphics, and interesting combat? Or do you want a more open-world exploration game with uh, kind of choose your way to go through it, you know, uh, doing side missions and stuff? It's a very different style of game, for sure. Jade Van Zyl, as I said, uh, on this very show, that's what we're trying to figure out. Like, what am I doing next? We have some interesting topic or uh, uh, candidates. SVC Chaos, which just came out, which I might try on PC to see if I can play a fighting game on PC like that. Um, the Nintendo World Championships, which also just came out, which could add content for random streams here and there. Um, this new Super Monkey Ball game that I guess came out, but I don't know too much about it. I'd have to look into it. Um, like, I just got Luigi's Mansion 2 HD was just recommended. So, I don't know. I'm not sure what to do. I know all about Tunic Ellipsian. I don't think anyone's going to be too interested in it, sadly, even though it is a good game. I don't think that's what people are really looking for right now. 12 to 18 hours for Luigi's Mansion 2? Okay, cool. Oh, I have no idea. I got another dollar tip from Sack of Shit who says, do you think that June reached out to people like John Rambo and Howard for the documentary? I have no idea. I, he didn't actually talk to me about that kind of stuff. Basically, he would ask me from my perspective about things that basically only I would know. Like, he asked me about the FGC stuff, and I gave him my perspective on that. He asked me about that discrepancy about a PC with my very early forum website guys and stuff like that. You know, stuff that's, like, so old that only I would even have, like, knowledge of it. So you have to ask me to say, is there anything on the internet I can find about this? What's your take on it? What's your perspective? He didn't ask me about anything like that recent, really. Not at all. <clears throat> so, you know, that kind of stuff, I don't know. Who knows? I doubt that he got into contact with anybody. Yeah. I mean, they're gone from the internet. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like John Rambo hasn't been around in ages, ages. And, and by the way, they already said their piece. Like, they did a whole giant video about it years ago in 2015. I reacted to that video two years ago. So it's like that whole discussion is done. Like, what else is there to add? It's done. We haven't even spoken to each other since 2015. So there's nothing else additional to say. You know what I mean? How's Kat today? Uh, she's all right. She's, uh, she'll be back in a couple hours. She's at work. She'll be back in a couple hours. What's going on, Cracker Jacks? How are you today? Looking forward to Fallout? Like I said, me too. Fallout's always a chill time. The, uh, 
the Nuka World DLC actually got to the better part. I said the first part where you're doing the stuff with the gang members is boring, but now we're getting into the part where we clear the park and do that stuff. That's more interesting. Oh, that's right. I'm doing a melee build, right? Wow, I totally forgot. It's been so long I forgot I do melee. I'm doing melee build. So I just punch things till they explode, right? I wonder what, what melee weapon was I even using. I don't remember. So I would love all of your opinions today on what, what I should be playing starting tomorrow and then moving forward in the next couple of weeks as I have these open streams. Um, please give me your feedback. Let me know. I, I have my opinions, and I got to make a decision about tomorrow by the end of tonight. So basically by the end of tonight's Stardew Valley stream, which also will be a chill stream where we can talk about this, I got to come to this determination of what to play in the next couple of weeks. So we'll see how it goes. <clears throat> Yeah, see, a lot of people say System Shock 2, but I don't I don't know about that game enough. Like, how long is it? How expensive is it? What would I even get it on? Would people care that much? Some people have said System Shock, but I, I don't see, like, a big group saying System Shock. Not System Shock 2. This is the remake, right? System Shock Remake is the one that everyone's talking about. That's the one that uh, that they made. Like, like updated graphics. It looks like a modern game now or something, right? AVP the Beast, you realize everyone's ignoring you, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> No one's addressing any of the things you're asking. He's literally a asking the most random things or saying random statements, but no one's really reacting to him. I don't know why. He's, he's on his, like, 12th one now. We all blocked him. Yes, he's saying such insightful things such as, listen to this one. Ready? If a jogger runs at the speed of sound, can he still hear his iPod? No, because he left his iPod back in the late 2000s when everyone threw them out when their smartphones started playing music for them. So, no, he can't hear his iPod. He's at a landfill somewhere. No, nah, Brian, I'm not interested in uh, multiverses. Listen, I liked multiverses when it came out a year two years ago as a beta. Then people got tired of it and said, stop playing it, so I did. I tried Multiverses again when it was re-released. Within two streams, people were done with it. So I'm not going to keep force-feeding Multiverses to the audience that doesn't like it. You know, I'm just not. It's a shame. I like it. Personally, I actually find Multiverse interesting. Now they're adding, uh, who are the new characters? Um, I think uh, Beetlejuice. And who's the other one? Samurai Jack? Yeah, that sounds cool to me. But guess what? The people don't care. If the viewers don't care, I can't... This Sadly, this stream is not just my hobby stream where I can just play whatever I want. It's got to be, you know, a stream where everyone's enjoying the content. Me, you, and it goes reciprocating like that. So, if only I'm liking it, then it doesn't work. And I think that was the case with Multiverses. So, it is what it is. Well, I play the new RGG Studio game when it releases. I don't know what it is. I don't know anything about it. I like the RGG Studio games. I just don't know what this one you're talking about is, so... You went the MVC collection? Oh. Uh yeah, it's not out yet. It's not there's no release date, right? Nothing's come out. So because of that, because there's no release date for it, there's no way you can put it into the plans. So no, nothing about it at all, sadly. <sighs>
Yeah, nothing. I wish. I really wish. But no, nothing. <laughs> Nothing. The Rebecca, you have a great day. No, I don't care about the college football game. Oh my god. It's freaking up like no, I don't care about that college football game. I have no desire to play it. None. Zero. You know, every once in a while, on a whim, I'll play a sports game because it's like a gimmick thing for me to try, right? I'll, if a Madden game's on Game Pass, I'll give it a shot. Or NBA 2K. I don't care about football or college football. Why would I want to play this game? I don't care if it's good. I still don't have an interest in the sport. So why would I play that game? It doesn't make sense. All right, guys. I think... I think it's time to wrap up the show. It sure seems like it's about time. I want to say thanks for all of your input. Let's continue over the course of Fallout today and Stardew Valley. Let's keep talking. And then by the end of today, I got to make my determination about what I'll do on tomorrow's day stream and go from there. Okay, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for hanging and chilling. And uh, I hope that you will... Uh, I hope that you will join me for today's stuff. I hope that you will not take off and run away. I hope that you will stick around. Because it's going to be chill, interactive, fun all day, you know? So, thanks for that. And uh, I will see you tomorrow. I'll tell you how today went. Of course, I'll tell you what we determined. And go from there. All right, guys. Thanks so much. See you tomorrow.